Mm-hmm. All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. RevTech. Got a RevTech mod sitting in front of me. I reviewed some RevTech stuff in the past. Their GTS mod I actually really enjoyed. And this is the RevTech Phantom 220 watt kit. And the first thing I want to show you, just so that I can turn it off, is this pin locking feature of this mod. You can set it so that when it goes to sleep, it will require a pin number to unlock again. And this is something you can customize in the menu, but if you want to have a pin on your device to keep, I don't know, your friends, your family, any kids away from using this, you, you can set a pin on it. It's a little wonky and it doesn't work very well, but it's definitely an option. So my pin right now is just one and now it'll unlock. You can set it to manually lock or you can set it to automatically lock after like a designated time period, like after 60 seconds, it's gonna lock and require a pin. So the first thing I'm gonna do is disable the pin. I'm gonna hold down this M button right here and that's gonna take you to the menu and you're gonna be able to go through everything, the whole menu. And we're gonna look at some of these, but right now I wanna get to the pin. Pin lock, you get turned off. And then a long press on the M button gets you back to the main screen and look at that main screen. That is a big, bold, beautiful display. I don't love the look of this clock screensaver, but meh, it's, it's fine. I don't see it that often, doesn't really bother me. I wish there was as many different clock options as there were dashboard options. RevTech says that this is actually glass. They call it koala glass. It definitely feels like glass. It doesn't feel like plastic. It feels very kind of slick and techy in your hand. Now this is only a dual 18650 mod. Battery door is held on by magnets on the back. Two 18 18650s and for two 18650s it's kind of a big honkin mod. I've held dual 2700 battery regulated mods that feel smaller than this. This feels like a big substantial hefty mod in your hands. It's not necessarily a pro or con. I can handle it just fine. It's just something to be aware of. It's pretty big. It's pretty weighty. It feels pretty honkin for only being a dual 18650 mod, but we have this huge beautiful beautiful display on the front. I absolutely love the way this looks. I love this huge display. I don't love like the car aesthetic, but it does look very cool and it works really well in this application. The majority of this mod is aluminum, but it's also plastic on the outside. This is plastic, this is plastic, this is plastic, the button is plastic, all the buttons are plastic. Obviously there is aluminum underneath the plastic and then your battery door has this like sort of, uh, I don't know if this is real leather or faux leather, but it does feel nice and soft, feels like leather and gives it a little bit of texture. The button itself, you can also kind of see right there, is a little bit textured. You can customize everything about this mod, including the illumination that happens around the button and that's all done in the main menu and the way that you access the menu is you just hold down this M, boop, and then you go to the main menu. And every time you go in the main menu, it leaves you off where you were before. So the last thing I was doing was adjusting the pin lock, which we are going to turn that off eternally. But you have the ability to adjust the time settings. It does vibrate when going through certain functions and you can turn that on and off. Light mode is how you're going to adjust the brightness and color of your button right here. So we want this on, we want it custom, and then you can come in here and adjust, like I can turn the red all the way down and so it's off. Then I can turn the green all the way up and then it's green and you can do any combination of those and then you just hit the fire button to lock it in and then you give a long press on the M to get back to the main menu. Obviously you can adjust things like the brightness of the display, how long your display stays on. This is where you can change all of your dashboards and there are a lot to choose from. This is the one that I like that I've been rocking but there's this one, multiple ones, different. All of them look different and they all tell you basically the same information. It's all gonna tell you your resistance, it's gonna tell you your wattage, it's gonna have battery level indicators on there, it's gonna have a puff count and it's gonna show you visually how long you're taking a drag for. So if I, let's lock this one in right here and let's get back to the main menu. And if I hold down the button, you can see right here, that's gonna be the timer for how long I hold down the button. 
1.5 seconds right there. And then this is gonna show me my wattage. And then these are the two battery level indicators. I love that there are so many different options for the dashboard. You can really customize this however you want. You can pick a dashboard and let's say that I wanna pick this one, but you can also change the color on it. You click one past the dashboard and you're gonna end up in color mode. And it kind of gives you a little bit of a limited palette here. You get a few colors. So let's leave it on like this blue color. And then if we go back to the main menu, we're gonna have that dashboard we chose and now it's in blue. And if we go back and look at the dashboards, now they're all going to be in a blue color because we chose blue. Well, let's get back to this one because this is my favorite one. I like that it has two battery level indicators. I like the wattage up here. I like the timer down here. I just think it looks cool. There's also curve modes for wattage and there is a curve mode for temperature. I don't use curve modes and I haven't experimented around with those. There is a full custom, you know, temperature control suite included in this as well. I don't use temperature control, so I have not fiddled around with any of it, but there is a bypass mode as well. This is parallel bypass mode. It's gonna put out about four volts, depending on how full your batteries are. It's not a series mode or anything like that. So it's not gonna, you know, if you put this in bypass, it's not just gonna blast you with eight volts. And then this is where you can change the mode from power to stainless steel, to titanium, to nickel. And then you can have custom TCRs as well. Like I said, I'm a simple man. I like wattage vaping so we're just gonna leave this on power. There's a factory reset button in case you get too carried away and adjust too many settings. You can set it back to default and then finally in the menu, you can just actually like just turn it off and you can completely turn off the device. And it vibrates in your hand when it turns off. So we're gonna power this back up. You're gonna see that RevTech quick, right to the screen, right away. And one last thing I wanna show you on this mod before we start talking about this tank is there's a stealth mode on this. So you can hit the M button three times, one, two, three, and it should Whoa, apparently hitting it twice cycles through the colors and I did not know that and that's not in the instruction manual. All right, well, so we're cycling through the colors, but you hit this three times, one, two, three, and it's gonna turn the screen black. It's gonna turn the screen dark. You can have the screen off and you can press the button and it will still vape. This doesn't light up anymore either when you put it into stealth mode. All the lights turn off and the screen turns off. If you don't want those on all the time, maybe save a little bit of battery life. I mean, this is a fairly large screen. I'm not sure how much battery life it's consuming. I've noticed no real difference in the length of, uh, you know, the length that my 18650s last. The tank itself, Real simple, real straightforward sub-ohm tank. It has coil heads, you plug them into the base. It has an adjustable AFC right here. There's a little bit of resistance to it and it doesn't feel very smooth, but it'll stay wherever you put it. And there's a full stop at the full open and full closed positions. And then if you look on the tank, you're gonna see that little red dot. You just press above the little red dot and that's gonna open up your big juice fill hole right there. Not sure why I can't focus on it, but the juice fill hole is a lot like the V-God juice fill hole. There is silicone covering the whole thing and you have to actually press your juice bottle into the tank to fill it up. Like into, into the tank to fill it up. But it's easy enough to do, boom, just like that. Four mil capacity on this tank. They do a TPD two mil capacity kit as well. It's honestly not a bad little tank. Most of all, I love that there is no bubble glass. Look at that. It's just a tank with a straight tank and a straight glass and no bubble glass. And that's my favorite. One thing that is kind of a bummer is the drip tip is not 810. It's their own special unique size. And you can only use this drip tip in this tank. No other drip tip I have fits on this tank. It is overall a pretty slick mod. So yeah, what we're going to do right now is we're going to get back out to normal view. We're going to vape this thing. So yeah, honestly, man, I've been having a pretty good time with this RevTech Phantom kit. The tank is fine if that's where we're going to start. The vape that I get from the tank is fine. This is with the quad mesh coil head on the inside, which is, uh, it acts like a quad mesh coil head would. It, it wicks really well. The flavor's real nice on it. All around, fine. It's a very serviceable tank that will vape just fine fine for you. What I actually want to do is swap out the coil head. I have only used the quad mesh coil head and I've been through tankfuls and tankfuls and tankfuls of this King's Custard liquid and I believe that I can take this out and replace the coil head without 
unfilling the tank. It's leaking a lot, but I think we'll be okay. I just need to change this coil head. This is something I should have done before I started shooting, but you know what? We're in it now. We're in this together. Coil head just unscrews out. And the coil head that I'm installing right now is the single strip of mesh coil head on the inside. Hey, sorry to butt in like this, but I forgot to mention they make six different coil heads for this particular tank. The M1 coil single strip of mesh is the one that I just installed. They also do the M3, which is a triple mesh, and an M4, which is obviously a quad mesh coil. They do three round wire coils as well. The S1, the S2, and the S4. I can't speak to the quality of those coil heads because I have not used them. Just gonna prime up the coil head as I normally would. I'm just gonna put a little bit of juice on the inside. Easy peasy. Maybe this is not something you're supposed to do with a full tank because I'm getting quite a bit of juice everywhere. I just really wanted to vape this other coil head. So not too bad of a process. Again, I'm not sure you're supposed to do that with a full tank, but it is possible. Got a little leaky on me, but it is possible. So yeah, this is a new coil head. 0.23. I think I'm just going to leave this right at about 60 watts. Airflow full open. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> So the first thing I noticed is that with the single strip of mesh coil head, it is substantially louder of a tank. When I had that quad mesh coil head in here, this was a relatively quiet tank. And now it just sounds like a wind tunnel. I think that just won the award for the loudest tank I have ever used. That's even louder than that unfortunately named Fat Baby Mesh Tank. It vapes great. It feels dense. It feels saturated. It feels as flavorful as one strip of mesh can feel. And I do notice a pretty substantial flavor difference between the single strip of mesh and the quad mesh, which is why I went for the quad mesh first. So honestly, overall, I've been having a really good time with this mod. I reviewed, like I said, some other RevTech stuff in the past that RevTech GTS was a mod I also really liked. And thankfully, this kind of continues that RevTech sort of design and style, that real techy, real big screen, real nice fit and finish. The mod just goes together really well. It's really comfortable to hold in your hand, even for a dual 18650 being this big. Like, this is big for a dual 18650. It doesn't really bother me. If you have smaller hands, I don't know. I have regular human nick sized hands and it fits in my hand real well this is a mod that you can grip and just hit the button with your finger or just grip and like hit the button with your thumb and apparently also have the world's loudest tank on top but yeah i mean overall i really like it I love this display. I love how colorful and pretty it is. I even like the color LED around the button and I like that that button light is customizable. The color schemes are customizable. The dashboards are plentiful for, to choose from. The menu system is real easy to navigate. It's got a USB for charging and firmware updates. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't generally like charging my mods with the batteries inside the mod through a USB. I much prefer getting a proper external 18650 charger pop my batteries out put them on the charger it's a much safer and easier process in my opinion but honestly this this RevTech Phantom it, it looks like a high performance mod it feels and responds like a nice high performance mod it's not possible to press this button without having it instantly fire I mean this fires instantly super super responsive button okay that's the last time i'm going to mention the really loud tank but did you hear how loud it was so yeah let's get down to brass tacks here are you going to need your vape budget hands if you're looking at the revtech phantom 220 watt kit Eh, kind of maybe a little bit clicking around the internet i found it for about a hundred bucks i think the msrp for this particular kit mod and tank included is about a hundred bucks so yeah i mean some vape budget hands are needed but i will say you're getting a lot of mod for your money the tank 
is fine. I can I can take or leave the tank. It doesn't really do much for me. But the mod itself, you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot of features, a lot of customization, a lot of power, and a really high performance, really responsive mod. So if we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take Everything I have, and I have nothing left to vape. Is the RevTech Phantom Kit something I would seek out and buy? Yeah, here's the thing. I'll say what I say about a lot of kits. If there was a, a slightly cheaper option, if there was like a $75 version of just this mod, then yes, I would buy just this mod. I love the screen, I love the heft, I love how techy it feels. I am a big fan of this particular mod. I am overly, I don't know, I don't wanna say hard on regulated mods, but when I find one regulated that mod that I really, really love, I just use it, use it, use it constantly. And lately it's been that V-Zone E-Mask Dual 18650 mod, but I kind of like this RevTech a lot better than this e-mask. It's not as comfortable to hold, but I feel like it's it's much more responsive than this V-Zone. So I have a feeling this RevTech might be replacing the V-Zone as like my go-to powerful daily driver regulated mod. Having that powerful regulated daily driver, you know, mod it is an important thing to me. And honestly, this thing's just slick. It's just slick and kind of badass from top to bottom. Now I'm literally just rambling. So thank you so much for watching. No links in the description, so you're gonna have to use your Google Foo, but that's what I got for today. RevTech Phantom 220, get into it. Okay, that's the last time. That tank is loud. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping.